you, David. Thank you, praise team. If you have your Bibles, and I hope you do, take those out. I'll meet you in 1 John chapter 2. Continue our series that you may know. There are things that John wants us to know out of Scripture about God, about Jesus, and about ourselves. And today we continue that, but I'm going to also continue with my uh, trivia questions to find out what you know on Bible trivia. Uh, again, I continue to get some comments that they're too easy, so I kicked it up a notch this week. Uh, not impossible, but a little more difficult than what they have been in the past. So you'll see up here on the slide, you've got some answers, some blanks there on your answer sheet. This week I've given you multiple choice on your questions. The first question is this. Who saved Israel by killing 600 Philistines with an ox goad? Not sure what a goad is, but if we have that slide, I'll, I'll have the uh, multiple choices for you. Uh, there you go. Who, who saved Israel by killing 600 Philistines with an ox goad? Was it David, Jonathan, Shamgar, or Samson? Everybody got it? The answer is Shamgar. If you put Samson, you're probably thinking of, of uh, Judges chapter 15, verse 16, where he killed a thousand Philistines with a donkey jawbone. All right, so was that one hard? <laughs> Trick question. Make it easier? Okay, what was the name of our Savior? Uh, it wasn't Shamgar. Number two. <laughs> Who beheld a vision in the valley of dry bones? Was it Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Joseph, or Daniel? Everybody got it? I don't see anybody writing answers down, so I probably will take the blanks off your outline. Okay, if you wrote Joseph, you were incorrect. If you chose Ezekiel out of Ezekiel 37, you got it. Third question, just what do you know? Bible trivia. Number three, who was the first Christian martyr? I hear it. Yeah, Stephen. Acts chapter. It's too easy. Can't win. I'm trying. <laughs> hey, uh, it's important that we know our word. It's important that we know the word. It's important that we know the word. Amen. Thank you. Let me ask you a question. Is it possible to know God and live like the devil? Is it possible to know God and live however you want to. Go as buck wild as you want. Is it possible to know God and have no life change? Well, John's dealing with that. John is going to continue to press into us this week. I pray that uh, you've been reading. You, I give you a homework assignment at the bottom of your page there. I want you to come into the service knowing what I'm going to be teaching from and you being as familiar as possible. Let's be in the Word. Let's know God's Word. One of my favorite preachers, Adrian Rogers, he made this statement. Study the Bible to know about God. Obey the Bible to really know God. Hey, it's one thing to know it. It's another thing to obey it. And that is one of our key points today that I want us to take away from our text. Uh, we can say it all day long, but to live it is another thing. Our actions, our living, our behavior validates the words that come out of our mouth. I remember coaching back in, in the 90s that feels like a lifetime ago, uh, and many of you know my story. That's where I come out of, the athletic world. But we had a young man named Tony that showed up uh, one day, his family moved in. It was a military family there in the Air Force. Uh, he shows up, and all the coaching staff, we were like, whoa. 
Stud just walked in the room. I mean, he looked like Tarzan. But as soon as we put pads on and began to play, he didn't play like Tarzan. In fact, he was scared to death of getting hit. He looked great, but he couldn't play dead. And looks and words are easy. Living it out is a whole other thing. And today, that's what we're dealing with. Do our words match how we live? It's important that we not only know the word, but that we obey the word. You know, last week and the week before, we began to uh, look at a theological test that uh, John provided us. A test of who is Jesus. You remember, uh, we got to get the Jesus question correct. And then we talked last week about sin, I mean, because understanding sin and, and what it does for our li- to our lives, how it impacts us eternally, it helps us recognize and even develop our understanding of Jesus, our need for Jesus, even in a greater way. So we had a theological test, and this week he provides us two more tests. And we'll look at those as we get into uh, God's Word. Do you remember when you were in school... Uh, those days when a teacher would give you a quiz in class. You'd take the quiz, and then the teacher would say these beautiful words. Hand your paper to your neighbor so they can grade your test, your quiz. Remember that? Because I would always be looking around me, who's the most gracious friend I got around me? And hand my paper to them, and they would be very generous with their grading, and I would influence them to the point of getting a good grade, even though I might not have deserved it. Remember those days? Well, today, we're going to do some self-tests. We're going to jump into these tests that John provides us, and I'm asking us to do a few things. I want you to self-grade. and Be honest with yourself. I want you to hand your paper to a neighbor and allow them to grade, but then I'm also going to ask you to hand it to God. Invite him into the conversation today as we look at these tests. We've already had a theological test. Did you get the Jesus question correct? Is he the one who died for your sins? Is he the one who, Jay has already mentioned, stepped out of heaven, he humbled himself, came and died for the sins of all mankind? Do you believe that? Have you gone to him and confessed your sins to him and said, I've, I'm guilty, I've done it. And I believe that you died to cover the price and pay the penalty that I deserve. You did that for me, and because you are willing to die for me, Jesus, I'm willing to live for you. Not just talk for you, not just talk a good game, I'm willing to live for you. See, our living validates the words that come out of our mouth. And today I'm going to ask you to self-grade. I'm going to ask you to pass your paper to your neighbor and invite God to come and grade that paper as well. And help us to see and then respond. Respond the way we're supposed to respond in humility to his word. So let me read our text today. I'm coming out of 1 John chapter 2. I'm going to read verses 3 through 11. So if you're able, will you stand with me as we look at this passage? Verse 3. And by this we know that we have come to know him if we keep His commandments. There's your first test. Whoever says, I know him, but does does not keep his commandments, is a liar. And the truth is not in him, but whoever keeps his word in him, truly the love of God is perfected. By this we know that we are in him. Whoever says, I abide in him, ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. Verse 7. Beloved, I'm writing to you no new commandment, but an old commandment that you had from the beginning. The old commandment is is the word that you have heard. At the same time, it is a new commandment that I am writing to you, which is true in him and in you, because the darkness is passing away and the true light 
is already shining. Whoever says he is in the light and hates his brother is still in darkness. There's our second test today. Whoever loves his brother abides in the light, and in him there is, there is no cause for stumbling. But whoever hates his brother is in the darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because he, the darkness has blinded his eyes. Father, we ask today that you would open up our heart, that we would be willing to grade our papers accurately. We invite you to come. Check our work. Check our answers. And Father, if we've got them wrong, that we will be humble enough to make the necessary course adjustments that you want us to make. Lord, I'm so thankful for this word. I pray that you'd start in me. Begin with me, Lord. If I have blind spots in my life, if any of us have blind spots, we just don't see it. Maybe our neighbor, when we pass it to our neighbor, our test to our neighbor, that they would help us see a blind spot. And Lord, if they miss it, would you help us see the blind spots in our lives? We ask this in your holy name. Amen. First test I want to point out today is the moral test. Being a moral person means that you simply live by a standard. You live by it. You don't just talk it. You live by it. Our standard is God's word, and we live by it. We try to live by it. None of us in this room are perfect. But, man, we try with all we are to live by God's moral standard. It's important to us. Last week, we looked at some, some false claims, that those ones that started with, if we say. This week, we're looking at three true claims that, whoever says. And they will provide, if we answer these questions accurately, it provides the believer an assurance of salvation, that you have come to know him. Not just talking it, but you can know it. Experientially, you can know that I have come to know God. Whoever says. Keep your eyes peeled for those. The repetition of those those words, whoever says, it gives emphasis to those statements. The claim of being a Christian is said three different ways in our text. To look at verse 4 with me real quick. Whoever says, I know God or I know him. Verse 6, it's said another way. Who abides in him. Verse 9, it says, walks in the light. In the light. Three different ways of communicating that we know God. But here's the deal. If we truly claim to be a Christian, then we will display it by how we live, by keeping his commandments in verse 4, by walking the way Jesus walked in verse 6, by loving our neighbors in verse 9. So there's some tests that you and I are going to grade ourselves. And as I said earlier, I invite us all to pass it to our neighbor and let them grade. You know, a few weeks ago we did our... Uh, uh, knowing my ministry class, and in it we take uh, a spiritual gifts inventory. It's, it's an inventory. It kind of helps point us in the right direction. But, but they, the people that took the class, they, they went and did the inventory. We came back together and reported what we discovered. Uh, this might be my spiritual gift. And I invited them to go to some of the people, closest people in their lives and say, hey, man, I did, I did a spiritual gifts inventory, and, it, and it, this inventory said this was my spiritual gift. If your friends, when they look at you and you tell them what you discovered, if they look at uh, what you say and they go, I, I, I don't see it. That, that's a good indicator because you just passed your test paper to a friend. But if you look at them and you say, hey, man, I, 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 this inventory said that my my spiritual gift was exhortation, encouraging people. And they go, oh, totally. That's totally you. That's good affirmation. You've passed your test to your neighbor and allowed them to step in and grade your paper. 
And we're doing the same thing today. It starts with you. It starts with me. Let's self-grade, step one. Pass it to our neighbor, step two. Step three, ask God to step in. And God, am I missing it? Do I have a blind spot when it comes to these tests? You see, a person's uh, living, the way they live, affirm the words or they deny. The person who's living affirms the, his claim to know God, then they can be assured that they know God. It can help validate. It can bring some assurance to our lives. Doubt is something that we all wrestle with at times. Am I really saved? Am I really saved? And John gives us these tests, these, these measurements that we can look at ourselves and go, I can know it. I can know for sure that I know God. So let's stop for just a second and begin our self-evaluation. Do my words and my living add up? Do I talk a good game with my family, with my neighbors, coworkers? But in my heart, I know I'm lying. I, I know that it's, it's just a, a game. And I, Joel, to be honest with you, I've become really good at this game. I play Christian pretty well. I know how to behave when I come to church. I know how to smile and shake people's hands and tell them that life is great when I come to church. But when I get at home and at night I'm laying on my bed and I'm staring at the ceiling, I know it's a lie. Friends, we're not talking about behavior modification. That, that's, that's religion. We're talking about a life that has been changed. And we understand that sin in our lives has impact not only eternally, but it has an impact now. And John is trying to, to affirm with these, these believers in this church how they can be assured of their salvation. And in our first test today, it's a moral test. Do I, do I live? Do I obey God's word? Today we might find in this test the place of correction. And we need to do a better job of obeying. We know how it is when we give our kids something we want them to do and they disobey. How that makes us feel how we respond to our children when they disobey. And our Heavenly Father is watching how we live as well. We're not just talking about behavior modification. We're talking about a heart that's been transformed. But there's good news. Verse 5 and 6. Now, I, want, I, want to move, I don't want to move too, past, too fast past this issue of being a liar. But I do want to get to the good news in verse 5 and 6. Look at it with me. But whoever keeps or obeys his word, in him truly the love of God is perfected. God's love in you has, is complete. It's, it's there. It's for sure. And by this we may know that we are in him. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way that Jesus walked. Friends, the only way you and I are going to know how Jesus walked is if we are in the word. If we study the life of Jesus, if we know how he responded to the Pharisees, if we know how he handled those people with infirmities, those people that were sick, if we know how he handled poor people, the only way we're going to know and be able to walk the way Jesus walked is if we study how he walked. Oh, it's important that we know the word. We're going to be people of the word. If you're new to us at Community of Grace, you need to know that we are going to stand on the Word of God as our directive and our playbook in life. It's just who we're going to be. By this we know that we are in Him if we abide in Him. But the proof of abiding or living in Him is walking the way Jesus walked. How's your walk these days? I want to let that breathe. 
grade your own paper. Joel, I do great on, on church day. I do great on Sundays. But Joel, as soon as I get to work, I admit it, this stuff is out the window. I don't give God a second thought while I'm at work. Joel, when I'm at home, I talk to people in my home the way I would never talk to the person who checks me out at the grocery store. Listen to the words of Jesus in John chapter 14. Jesus says this, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Verse 21 of John 14, whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Verse 23 of the same chapter, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Chapter 15, verse 10. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. How are we doing on obedience? Are you grading your paper? Am I obeying God's word all day, all week? I'm doing my best. And as I said earlier, I'm not, we're, none of us are perfect. We're not perfect. But one of the things that people will be able to say about us is that we are striving. We're working hard to be like him. We're trying our best to love the way he loved, to forgive the way he forgave me, to be generous the way he was generous with me, obeying him. The proof of our love of God is not in our words, but the proof is in our living. John says that whoever lives out the commands of God, can know that they have come to know him. So let me ask you again. Do you know God? Grade your paper. Does your heart strive daily to walk with Jesus in the way he walked? Grade your paper. We cannot claim to live in him if we do not strive to live like him. Are you striving today? How's your paper? Second test that we have in our text today is a social test. Loving others. Verses 7 through 11. He starts this passage, this section, with the word beloved. My beloved. Uh, agape toy. Uh, it's, a, it's a term of endearment. This is, guys, I, I'm going to be talking about love. I mean... This is an old commandment that you guys have known forever. And, and now I'm going to point one out, one of those commandments out specifically. This loving God, this loving others. A commandment that they've known all along, but now it is kicked up a notch in the person of Jesus. Jesus took the idea of love, something that they've known. He mentions it's an old command. I'm not writing you a new one. It's an old one. They've known it. But he takes it and makes it a new one. He makes it a new one by the emphasis that he puts on love. He makes it a new one by the attention, the quality, the sacrificial, self-giving kind of love. He also opens the lens of who should receive our love when he said, love your enemy. Love your neighbor as yourself. By the way, when it comes to loving people, how would your neighbors grade your paper? How would your coworkers grade your paper when it comes to loving? Because here's the deal. This, I'm telling you, it's good news. This is very... Uh, self, this is assuring to us. If our neighbors take our papers, if our coworkers take our paper and say, man, you're one of the most loving people I know. Man. Now that's just a signal back to me that God's love is truly perfected in me. It's been completed in me. I, 
God's love is not only in me, but it, I, my life is now becoming a conduit of God's love to other people. That is very self, that is assuring to me and to you that we know him. But if our coworkers and our neighbors look at my life and your life and the way we're living and they go, dude, you're one of the rudest people I know. You're mean. I know you claim to be a Christian, but man, the foulness that comes out of your mouth, that doesn't match up with the Jesus that I've heard about. See, our living validates what we say. Grade your paper today, but also pass it to your neighbor. How about in your own home? Joel, you're getting personal here. Why don't you move on? Let's move on to the next one. No, I'm not going to. Because I want you to be the same loving person. I want to be the same loving person at church and at home. I want to show grace to people in my home. The way we show grace to each other here at church. Are you a different person here than you are at home? Oh, our living is what validates what we say with our mouth. It either validates or it makes us out to be a liar. How's your paper? Are you grading? He gives us two tests today. Our obedience to his commands and our love of others. How you doing? Jesus said in John chapter 13, verse 34, a new commandment I give you today, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. We okay? We okay today? I didn't say these would be easy tests. I didn't say today's uh, trivia questions would be easy. No one said that walking with Jesus would be easy. How are we doing? Let's take more inventory in our personal grading of our tests. Jesus also added a quality to this love, sacrificial, self-giving love. Well, who is my neighbor, Joel? Who, is it just the person that lives next door? I mean, you've mentioned before that I should draw a little map around my house and, and I should write the names of every person that lives in these homes around my house. I should get to know them. I should know their children. Are those your only neighbors? Or is it the person that checks you out at the grocery store? Or at Andy's frozen custard up the street? Not that I would know anything about Andy's frozen custard. Take inventory today. This old, old commandment, this new commandment to love. John Stott, he makes a comment here. He says, we do not first misjudge people and then hate them as a result. Our view of them is already jaundiced by our hatred. It is love which sees straight, thinks clearly, and makes us balanced in our outlook, in our judgments, and conduct. Because here's the deal. God loves, God's love exposes the darkness of hatred. It exposes it. God loves the whole world when, when, when you have people in your life that, that you don't like, they don't look like you, they don't believe like you, they have a different political affiliation. If you've already got your mind made up, then I'm not going to like them. That, the light exposes that. Do you realize that Jesus died for people in the other political party? 
Do you realize that Jesus died for those that were celebrating Pride Month downtown last week? Loves them. He loves them. And the question is, do you and I? How are you doing on the social test? How are you doing on the obedience test? John says there's a couple of ways that you can know. If you keep his commandments and you love your brothers, pass your paper to the next person. But also let's ask God to point out any blind spots we might have in our lives. There's a song, some people know it as a hymn. I highlight these every once in a while when they fit. This one fits. The hymn is by a man named John Samus. S-A-M-M-I-S. I may be pronouncing that word wrong. But here's the lyrics to that song. When we walk in the Lord and in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. You see, salvation, that's God's business. That's God's responsibility. But our responsibility is to trust in Jesus and then obey his word. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Church, I want us to be honest with ourselves today. You and your space, right where you are. And I finish here. I want God to have the last word. I'm going to give some moments of silence. But I want you to invite God to come in and grade your paper. And if he lays on your heart that person at work that nobody likes, that everyone's mean to, everyone talks about him around the water cooler, and maybe God lays that person on your heart today to do something kind for that person this week, to show them some love. It might be something as simple as a smile. It might be a kind word. If it's how... You're loving someone in your home. And God lays that on your heart. But I'm going to ask us to be honest and and humble enough to respond and be obedient to what God is laying on our heart. Let's not just be hearers of the word, but doers of the word. Because if we're just hearers of the word, who do we fool? Ourselves. Come on, man. Come on, girl. Let's grade our papers honestly. So take these few moments of silence and ask God to enter in. And is there someone, is there a place in your life, is there a, is there a sin that you just keep on going back to that, that you know it is disobedience when you go there? Is there something that God's going to say to you, it's time to stop that. Let's get that fixed. So take these moments. You know, I'm captivated by the last phrase of verse 11 this week. Where it said, blind, it says, uh, this person is blinded by the darkness. Uh, some of you are familiar with that song in the 70s, Blinded by the Light. This one's talking about being blinded by the darkness. 
Love and light, they're paired together. Darkness and hatred, they're paired together. And friends, listen, just the same way that when you and I travel and we're in a hotel room and we're not familiar with the surroundings and the, dark, the room is dark at night and you got to get up and use the restroom, you got to feel your way to the restroom. You know what I'm talking about? You're blinded by the darkness. And today, if there's hatred in your heart, recognize it. Let's be people of love and step into the light. It is in doing that that we can know, we can know that we have come to know him. We've come to know him. In a moment, uh, our praise team is going to come and, and lead us in worship in one of the great old hymns. And I want to invite you if you've never trusted in Jesus, if you've never given your life to him, that today would be the day you surrender your life to Jesus and live for him. Don't just talk, live for him. If today you need prayer, maybe God's laid something on your heart and you realize this is going to be tough. Joel, I need prayer. I'd love to pray with you. I'll ask Jay and our prayer team to be around the room. If you need prayer, let's do it, man. God's laying stuff on your heart, don't you walk out of here without doing business that God's laid on your heart. Deal? Deal? Deal. Let's stand. Let's